The Sprinter has quite a characteristic front end with these large LED headlamps and the grille that almost looks like it's smiling at us. And behind the nose here, the three-pointed star, we've got access to our charging ports. 16-inch steel wheels come as standard. I like these large door mirrors. As standard, you get this single side sliding door that allows for easy access to the load compartment from the side, allowing you to easily get in those awkwardly sized, long and heavy items. There's not much to say about the design of the rear end. It's very typical Mercedes van, but the one thing I want to point out is the rear view camera, which if you configured it, will be right at the top there, providing an almost bird's eye view of your behind when reversing into a tight gap. One of my favorite features with the e Sprinter are these 270 degree folding doors. As you can see there, they come right back. You can actually fix them in place at 90 or 180 degrees, providing incredible access to the large load areas you can see there. Coupled with the low loading height and also side access means getting those awkwardly shaped and sized objects into the back is an absolute breeze. The dimensions of the load compartment remain rather unchanged from the regular Sprinter. In terms of length, we're looking at around 3,390 millimetres. Width comes in at 1,780 millimetres and height is 2,080 millimetres. So guys, in terms of payload, we're looking at 731 kilograms here, which doesn't sound like an awful lot for a large electric van. And you'll be right in thinking that. Unfortunately, there used to be a smaller battery pack option available here in the UK. It's around 41 kilowatt hours, and that delivered a payload of 1,075 kilograms. That is no longer available here. It is available in other markets though. And it just means that the heavy battery pack you get with the Sprinter is weighing the van down quite a lot. So you can't load those heavy objects as much as you can with rivals. As standard, you'll get this full width partition bulkhead protecting the driver and the front passenger from dirt, dust and debris. You'll also get this standard wood flooring with an added non-slip textured surface. You can go with plastic flooring if you want, that'll set you back around 500 pounds. And then we have optionally added on the interior wood paneling to protect the inside of the van from getting scratched and dented. That will set you back around 400 pounds. In addition to that, there's lots of tether points on the floor, so you can easily strap objects down while on the go. And there's three lights dotted around the load space so you can see what you're doing at night. This is pretty much just the bare minimum of what you can do with your e-sprinter though. There's lots of optional add-ons that you can configure to really personalize it so it meets your particular requirements. And if you'd like to dive into that, be sure to get in touch with our team. Okay guys, so the e-sprinter is powered by a 55 kilowatt hour battery pack and that's assisted by an 87 kilowatt electric motor driving the front wheels. That means it generates 114 horsepower and 295 newton meters of torque and that is enough oomph to get it moving from standstill rather smoothly and that's quite impressive for a large van. I wouldn't say it's particularly immediate or rapid acceleration. You're going to have to judge those gaps in traffic pretty carefully. You're not going to be able to nip in to those tight gaps like you can with rivals. But on the plus side, it does work up rather smoothly to its standard 75 miles per hour top speed. And due to the lack of a gearbox, the comfortable seat and the high driving position, it is very easy to drive. So there's a number of different speed limit options available with the e-Sprinter. If you configure it with the standard 75 miles per hour limit, you'll achieve an electric range of around 82 miles. But of course, this depends on a variety of conditions such as how much load is in the back, the weather, uh, the road conditions, etc. You can increase this to 95 miles if you limit the speed to a maximum of 50 miles per hour. Now, this means that the van does pale in comparison to key rivals like the Renault Master E-Tech that give you around 126 miles of electric range. Uh, Stellantis Group offerings like the Citroen E-Relay and the Peugeot E-Boxer, uh, they give you around 160 miles. And then of course we've got the Ford Transit which achieves close to a, uh, 200 miles of electric range. So you're going to have to really weigh up whether the e-Sprinter is suitable for your daily business. Let's talk about charging for the e-Sprinter. So it supports AC and DC fast charging. If you install a 7.2 kilowatt wall box either outside your house or at your place of business, you can plug that into the e-Sprinter and then it will do a zero to 100% charge in around eight hours. So that's ideal, uh, you know, if your employees have finished their shift, you can then plug in the e-Sprinter and it'll be topped up ready for them the next day. 
It also supports 20 kilowatt DC charging, allowing you to plug the Sprinter in for a 10 to 80% charge in just two hours. So that could be ideal if you're traveling further than normal with the Sprinter. You need to stop off somewhere to get a quick burst of juice to finish your journey, then that DC support is very welcome. Optionally, you can configure support to up to 80 kilowatts, and that will allow you to do a zero to 80% charge in just 30 minutes. Perfect if you need to stop off somewhere like a motorway service station. Let's talk about ride quality around town at slow speeds. I'm finding the Sprinter to be very comfortable. It does a nice job at, at absorbing light undulations. Going over large humps and bumps though, you really do feel an impact scent throughout the front cabin and the load area. The, uh, the van really struggles to deal with those impacts. Also because the powertrain makes no noise whatsoever because it's fully electric. You will hear some sounds that you wouldn't otherwise hear with the standard diesel Sprinter and um, they do a Appear into the cabin here and resonate around but overall if you're playing like an album or podcast you can drown those light sounds out quite easily. So the e-sprinter weighs over 2.7 tons as a result of the heavy battery pack underneath the floor. So how does this affect handling? Well it's actually come at an advantage because it's giving the van a low center of gravity allowing it to deliver a very refined and comfortable drive. When you wind down through country roads and around tight corners and bends you'll notice that there's very little body lean for a vehicle of this size which is brilliant plus you've got prominent side bolsters on the seats nicely holding you in place. As you would want and you'd probably expect from the e-sprinter, visibility is absolutely brilliant. I've got a fantastic view of the road ahead, near panoramic. Uh, the side pillars here are nice and slim so they don't obscure my view at uh, junctions and traffic lights. Mirrors are large enough, giving me a brilliant view of what's behind me. And you've got a smaller mirror just below the larger one there, allowing you to see curbs easier when reversing. Uh, with this particular version of the e-sprinter as well, we have a rear view camera and that shows up there on the rear view mirror. It's a very tiny display, it's quite hard to read actually, and the resolution's quite low, so I wouldn't rely on that completely, but it's helpful assistance when maneuvering this very large vehicle into tight spaces. Inside the Sprinter you'll find lots of hard plastics, indeed there's not much in the way of material variety but at least the plastics feel nice and robust and high quality, especially those atop the dashboard. I like the design of the centre console where you'll find gloss black air vents and further down we have some chrome trim on buttons for the air conditioning. Yeah, it all comes together quite nicely, but it all looks just a bit dark in here. It needs a bit of variety to brighten things up inside. As standard, you get these Matarin fabric seats and they're very comfortable uh, thanks to these prominent side bolsters and they have great manual adjustment so you can pump yourself up nice and high like so, giving you a very lofty view of the road ahead. Or if you're six foot or over and want to maximise the legroom on, on offer, you can come down and recline like so. Plenty of space for those six foot drivers. Behind the wheel, you've got a traditional speedometer alongside a dial that ensures you're maintaining maximum efficiency at all times. It will show you when energy is being harvested back into the battery pack and it will tell you when you're pushing things a little bit too much. You may need to ease off the accelerator in order to preserve battery life. House between those two dials is a very tiny and basic display. It's black and white and it shows information such as how many miles you've covered so far, how much mileage you'll have left to eke out of the battery pack, so how much charge you've got left in that battery and whether you've left the side door open. This is complemented by a very basic audio system as standard. For me, this is just not good enough for a vehicle that costs around £50,000. It's something that you'd see in a car from about 10 years ago. On the bright side, the build quality for this central cluster here it is nice and high. The buttons feel very tactile. They're satisfying and easy to press while on the go. Apart from the uh, volume dial here, it's a little bit too far away from the driver. You do get a USB-C port though for plugging in your phone and giving it a charge while on the move and you've got three compartments there for easy to access objects. There's loads of space to store objects in the front here. You get an overhead storage compartment, good place for the manuals. We can just plop them up there. The door bins come in this double decker format. On the first layer, they're large enough to easily swallow a bulky bottle like so. And then on the second layer, more suitable for bits of paper and documents you want easy access to. On the dashboard, you've got two cup holders in front of the driver, then another two on the other side though. They are a little bit too small for that bulky bottle, more suitable for coffee cups 
And then they've got a deep compartment housed within those two cup holders, perfect for snacks and things like that. If you have any questions at all about the eSprinter guys, be sure to get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialist via the number in the banner below. We'd be happy to provide our advice. We can dive into this van into more details and ensure that it fits the needs of your business. Alternatively, just click the pop-out banner up there to book a call at a time that best works for you whenever it's convenient, really. If you found today's look at the eSprinter helpful, guys, then do give it a thumbs up. We'd appreciate that. Also, subscribe to the OSV channel for more in-depth reviews of vans like this one right here. You can even watch our eVito review which is also up on the channel and make sure to ring the notification bell down below as well that way you'll get notified when we upload another in-depth review but that's it for today thanks for watching take care safe driving